a lot of people don't even know what the important, most important thing of an ad is. The call to action is the purpose of this ad. It's to tell the reader to do something or buy something or go somewhere. And uh, that is the strongest thing of an ad. Hey, Don. Don't let us bother you. Go ahead. No, you're no bother. Mm -hmm. You can give us a hand here. I told you the time about I was shooting these tractors, and I was getting beautiful results on the, the treads. No one else could do that. They, they would shoot the picture on, you know, 7 by 10 and then they'd take it back and try to retouch those things in. Mm -hmm. Usually it was a disaster. Uh -huh. You know what I did? I took my airbrush down there. I was also the retoucher on the thing. So I would just retouch the tractor itself because I knew which direction it was, the light was going, and it was. <laughs> and everyone was after me. How do you do that? Because <laughs> you're the master. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. So there, there, there was a time. He is the very best ad man I've ever met, and he always talks about somebody else, but he is by far the best ad man I ever met. He's, he's a great artist, my goodness. He's one of the best I know. Don is a powerful creative. He has a great deal of experience and a great deal to say about how you can get from point A to point B. He's an amazing ad man. He has a, a great ability to cut through the clutter, to understand what it means to a consumer, and to just say it. Uh, he's, he's, he's smart. Uh, you know, he, he gets it. As a businessman and as an artist, he, he's this interesting dichotomy because as an artist, he, um, he notices and pays attention to and is sensitive to so many things on such a deeper level. The core of him is an artist. Um, but what's amazing about that is that he has found this way to turn that into a profession and, and to turn that into a business. Um, and I, I just think that's damn impressive of him to be able to do that. I'm most proud of how much my dad has accomplished. And it's hysterical to me that he doesn't think it's enough. Just how far he's come. I was born in a hospital in St. Louis, Missouri. They smuggled me down with the fire escape because they didn't have money to pay for it. And then we took off and came to Michigan. Donnie was the first friend I, I had. I've known Donnie since grade school, kindergarten, because I was always envious of him being able to draw. And he used to draw these little cartoons and stuff. Yeah, he come up under a, a rough situation. Uh, his mom was the backbone, actually, of the house, the home. Don was next, he, he helped. That's why he, he, he worked like he had paper around. I think the relationship that he had at home with his dad, you know, I think is what made him strive to, to do better. I carried 165 papers, cold winter nights. You know, sometimes you're in knee-deep snow. And the funny part about it is it didn't seem at the time that it was all that big a deal. He seemed that other people didn't live the way he had to live. So he had that drive to go ahead and do what, uh, what needed to be done. I carried a full load of books during the day and worked nights at the a &P. I was running the nightclub. I had 20 guys reporting to me when I was in high school. So I learned an awful lot. I did enjoy the work. I might have stayed there. I met Don probably uh, in 1957. Uh, I was hired by Whirlpool and he already was working there. Uh, he was an artist. So we knew each other. Uh, were, were very poor. They lived in the housing project and we lived around the corner from them in a housing project. Most people don't want to live that way. We wanted something better for ourselves and our families and, and worked hard to get it. I enjoyed basic, it was fun. 
After the improving ground, I was, I was in the barracks wondering what I was doing there and what my next move was. And uh, I met a fellow. He says, well, let me see your papers. And he says, oh, 81410, you're an artist illustrator. And we did work on top secret work. Well, one of my first projects was working on the AR-15. The other thing, uh, project we were working on is weapons comparisons between what we had and what the Soviet Union had. I got out of the Army as an E E6, a, a specialist, I made sergeant two years. Got out, uh, went to work at an outfit in Benton Harbor, Vivox Advertising. It was a Chicago-based agency. I was dealing with some real heavy hitters. We did work with Johnny Unitas, shot with three of the old-time well-known football stars. And we rented the Notre Dame Stadium and brought in these three hot shots. I worked 80 hours a week as a rule, and I was being taken advantage of, but I was gobbling up this experience. To say that I didn't object to it that much is true, but it was, I figured out that's no way to live. So I, I did pick up my Crayolas one day. When he said he brought his Crayolas home, it was his magic markers, but he called them his Crayolas. When home told Audrey, I quit, I'm gonna work in the basement. He said, that's great. You've got $38 in the bank and a mortgage and four kids. But it reached the point, I just couldn't do it anymore. I was the gopher. I'd go for this and go for that. You know, I did all the, the accounting and the book work and everything. It was a little strange talking about all the problems I had with some work I did for her in bed that night, you know. How'd you like to sleep with an account exec? I mean, ah. <laughs> so basically, that's that's how we got started in the basement, just Don and me. And then Tom Mensinger came, and uh, we were in the basement for over two years. The first guy that helped me was Tom Mensinger. <laughs> He's been working with me ever since. It was it was great. I mean, it was learning. I was just starting out in the business, and. Uh, what better teacher? My goodness, he just taught me a lot of stuff. I always remember Dad drawing at the kitchen table, um, especially on weekends, but sometimes at night, where he'd draw pictures and tell stories, and he always drew castles and dragons and villains and damsels in distress, and there was always creativity in our house. I always loved his world. He had to me, the most amazing job. Visiting uh, his agencies, the places, his, his offices when I was a kid was, was a trip. It was kind of like the Wild West. Uh, the, the people that all worked there were very creative. It was amazing. Everything about it was amazing. There was always a closet with, with all the markers. Um, every color you could possibly imagine. And the paper, and the different kinds of paper, and the different textures. and. Um, it was just, it was, it was amazing. It was like Willy Wonka's magic factory. It was amazing to be there. Don's perception of a father, um, because he didn't have a good role model as a father, he took a lot of it from that cartoon. And his perception was always the, the role of the father is to be high on the hill, uh, as Bambi's dad was, uh, shining, uh, you know, protecting, uh, providing, and make, you know, securing and, and making sure everyone was safe. And he's always done that. Uh, he's always been there uh, for all of us. He was always there, always working, always doing what he thought was the right thing for the family. As a father figure, I think that the best fathers are the ones that set great examples for their kids. And he's done that for me. I'm really, really proud of him for what he's accomplished. and. The opportunities he's given all of us, our family and the family of John Sarahoff, every employee, he's, he's made a living for a lot of people by his hard work. So a career for a lot of people and a future for a lot of people. And, and it's not just that it's a family company because there are lots of family companies. It's the feeling that the staff itself is also part of that family, the feeling that 
um, were closer than any other place I've ever worked. That comes all the way from the top. I think that Don is interested in the success of everyone who works for him. It's not that we have the best facility or we do the most amazing things or we have clients that take us to you know tropical places and it's all that, but it's really him. Uh, his, his honesty, his integrity, his ability to look you in the eye and tell you, hey, this is what I'm gonna do for you, and, he's, and he stands by it. It's always been very important to Don to take care of his team. And um, so much to the point that he went two years without a salary just to save jobs, and three years of taking life savings just to keep the company going. I think it makes working at Johnson Rahoff all the more personal and all the more important to us because it is his life and, and it's every sacrifice he's ever made, every late night he's worked. Do you see the little, little soldier up there with a the metal hat? You know what is wonderful about him? He's never given up his post. He's never quit his post. You know? So he stands there year after year after year and never gave up. I think that's pretty cool. I think the biggest lesson that I've learned from, from my dad is just to never give up. I mean, he, he never ceases to amaze me. It doesn't matter what comes at him, whether it's personal or professional, he always seems to get through it. Well, what I'm most proud about my dad is his, um, really his ability to um, not give up, really ever. The simple fact that he had a good job, a very good job as a creative director, and left it to start his own business with really no money in support to that was, was huge. I've learned a lot of lessons from my dad. Um, he, if there's one thing I learned from him, it's never to give up. And he instilled that in me no matter what it is. He always says, if you believe in something, don't give up until you achieve it. And he always said, choose your star and don't stop until you reach it. Don, it's been a wonderful 43 years and uh, I, hope, I hope to keep going for a lot more time, a lot more time. I love you, and I thank you. I'm grateful for the attitude. I'm grateful for the attitude that, I, that I'm trusted in what I do, and I, and I will, I'm, I'm thankful. I want you to know that I love you and respect you so much and attribute all the things that are good about me from what you've taught me over the years. Um, uh, thank you and I love you. I just want to say, Dad, that I'm really proud of you for all your hard work over the years, all your sacrifices. I don't think you even realize how successful you've become, but thank you. Hey Pops, um, this is uh, kid number three, just letting you know that um, we got this. You can rest now. We, we've got it under control. All for you.